Hello, welcome back. In this episode, we make and steam the garboards into place and our traditional wooden clinker boat really is beginning to take shape. But for all the joys, some things do start to go a bit wrong. A titanic <laughs> mistake. So we've come down to the side of the estuary and there's this um, wreck which has been here for about five or ten years slowly breaking up. The timber is unfortunately just breaking up and disappearing off into the or into the tide. So what we've realized is that it seems to be made of mahogany and we think we can recycle three or four planks from it. We have to be quite careful because anything we remove has to be taken away from the foreshore here. We can't just rip bits off the boat and leave them to be washed about by the tide. So we have to clean up as we go, basically. Oh, well done. So there it is, one very nice salvaged piece of mahogany and somewhere, not quite sure where yet, we will find a place for this on the boat. When we started building this boat in September, I knew that building a boat always takes twice as long as you think it's going to take. So when anyone said is, oh, well, when, when is it going to be finished then? Which people seem to like to ask. I said, well, yeah, oh, oh, I think, you know, if we can get it in the water by the end of next summer, we'll be doing well. You know, September, we'll have a, a few weeks with it in the water and, and that'll be fine. But secretly, I uh, I was thinking, you know, I think it'll probably, I don't think we'll probably get this done by June. Well, um, it's now February, the 1st of February, and we haven't even begun planking the damn thing. So um, I think, you know, the idea of getting it in the water by even the end of the summer is 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 looking ambitious so my uh, my advice is if you're building a boat allow uh, twice as long as you think it's gonna take you uh, when you've allowed twice as long It's also taking a bit of stick these days. Is that a metaphor for something? It is really great because you you can just like move it around and um, you can put it on things and it doesn't matter if it gets too dusty and stuff like that. So.
But you don't know if it's filming anything at the time. No, there is that. I but it's it, I don't, for static use. Like it's it less. Like. It's becoming less of a camera and more of a sort of friend in the workshop. Right. A slightly curmudgeonly grumpy friend in the workshop. Isn't it? Do you think you need to lie down in the darkened room for a wee bit now? So you've got to be. Um, you've got to be very careful what you say around the GoPro. Why is that then? Well, you don't want anything that's going to like upset it or insult it because it might decide to not record or to erase important material. Yeah, this is this whole AI thing that people are talking about now, isn't it? Yeah. All this week, pretty much, been trying to sort out and fit the garboard. And the garboard is the is the is the plank that's nearest to the keel. And the problem is, it, it sweeps and turns in all kinds of different ways. So, midships, it's actually sitting quite flat to the keel or quite square to the keel. By the time it gets here to the stem, it's at a really really sharp angle. In order to get this twist in the garboard, um, it has to be steamed. What happens is you heat the timber up, and when you heat the timber up, the natural glues in the timber uh, become less sticky, they become more sort of fluid and it means that the fibres of the wood can kind of move and run over each other. And then when the timber cools down, those glues set again. So you're using the natural glues that are within, within the timber. So what that means is that what you're doing is you are constantly crawling around underneath the boat looking for the distances between the garboard and the keel and then taking, marking those, taking it off, shaving away uh, very, very millimetres, putting it back, seeing how it fits. And of course each time you have to take this off you're undoing six or seven clamps and there's a lot of messing about trying to get it to, to fit back in. So it's a really slow, long, painstaking process.
So there it is, after an inordinate amount of crawling around, kneeling on dodgy knees, um, going ooh about a dodgy back, the garboard, the second garboard is finally nailed in and all that's got to be done now is I've got to come along and, and sort the rows out on it, but it's all nice and stable now and um, it can be left for a day or two before we, we finish, off, finish it off by putting the, the rows on it. So that's, uh, that's been a long process, but it's uh, a great feeling to get that part done. Right, so, made a have a confession. Go on. You probably right. put me in my dress so you don't No, know. it's um, I've made a a Titanic <laughs> <laughs> mistake. Right. You um, have you've been not so again there. Because it is also to do with rivet. So I, you, at the moment we've put We've marked the rib that's out, and between each rib, we've allowed for one nail. Yeah. So when I went to the Book of Words today and looked at the, the God, went, to the, went to the God of Boat Building, John Leather, right? It turns out that there should be two nails between each rib. So that leaves us with big mistakes on the first two planks that we put in, the garboard and the other one. And we've got two, we've got two planks on either side. Yeah. So we've got some options. Go on, what are the options? Uh, so the options are... Start again. One. Yeah, basically. Take off all the planks, plug the holes on the hog, and rebuild using the planks as patterns. Option two is to leave it as it is, but correct, do it correctly on the, the planks, the subsequent planks, the next lot of planks that we do. Option three is to plug the holes that we've done and um, then put the nails in the correct places. So we take the nails out, we plug them, plug those holes, uh, fettle that up and then put them in the correct places. Um, option four, which is actually, I think, probably quite a preferable one, is we just give up. <laughs> <laughs> we just say that, you know, you can make without a lot of those interesting time making a boat, we're no good at it. Yeah. It's just, it could just be consigned to the kind of the, 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 the weedy bit of failures. <laughs> the failed uh, projects. Yeah. And... Like perpetual motion. You know, we could trying to think of other fields, spend but... more time going to the football. Yeah. 
The other option is simply to move the ribs to that position there. So the ribs now fall here. So all you're doing is you're moving this rib three inches, three and a half inches from the transom. And then that, that is, then that is the and that's cap. still the correct thing. So you, so that should be right all the way up. And it will be right all the way along. So you're using the existing the, holes. these existing holes. So all you've got to do then is they can stay in for the moment. And when we come to put the ribs in, we'll take those out and replace them with wrong, longer nails and rows that go right the way through right, be fine. through the ribs. And we're not plugging in anything. Structurally, it shouldn't make any difference structurally, should it? No. You know, boat building experts will come along and they will look at it and they will say, oh, that rib is in the wrong place. So Coming down here from London with a fancy They won't be from there. London, will they? They'll be from, you know, some boat building place. And they'll be like, it, it, when they're talking about boats, they'll, just, uh, they'll, they'll come in and they'll say, John, it's really good to see you. I've been here, it's really good to see you, John. I'm seeing you for a bit. Why have you done that? Why have you done they that? They will. You're right. They'll say stuff like, they'll be talking to each other. They say, Well, you'll never believe what they've done. I was trying to see the other day. You'll never believe what they've done down in Star Cross. <laughs> and, and the other one will. Stop, you know, he'll, he'll take his fag out of his mouth and he'll, and he'll say wisely, Well, you'll always get somebody to cowboy <laughs> it up for you. East to Trafalgar, cyclonic four to six, occasionally seven at first in south, thundery showers, mainly in south, good occasional poor in south. West to Trafalgar, northerly five to seven, occasionally gale eight at first. So here we are in the middle of planking. Well, not even in the middle. We're just uh, up to the third or fourth plank and um, just got this plank beautifully fitted. What seems like days of work, got it bedded in. And then I just kind of walk around the other side. And what do I discover as I look down on it? This horrible split that starts here just by the stem and goes down towards um, station number two. And it's just the most sickening feeling when you've spent literally a couple of days sorting out a plank, getting it all right. And then you see that and you just think, oh, why am I bothering with this? I've thought through all kinds of possibilities. There's nothing to be done, but to take this section of plank off, take it off, make a new piece and scarf it in. So you can see the, that's the split. Look. Point it with your finger. No. Yeah. See it? Yep. Yeah. Ugh. So what are you doing there, Connor? I'm just removing all this gunk. You put all the there. sealant. I don't know, some bloody cowboy. It's a bit of a mess, when I wasn't it? there. So you just roll it back and it seems to come off pretty easy. 
It sounds like it's something's happening there. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a bit uncomfortable, but it is coming off, but like pretty slow, you know. Rough as a badger's ass. As they say in more refined circles. So here it is all bandaged up and it's been uh, glued with epoxy glue and we just got to leave that overnight and it's one of those jobs that we won't know really until tomorrow morning until we steam bend this and start trying to move it around we won't know um, whether it's worked or not. The really important bit about repairing the split plank mm -hmm. the GoPro didn't record it ah. the bit oh. the bit where we take it's a really good bit it's like a fantastic bit of um, cinema it's like ima <laughs> imagine imagine David Lean right yeah. imagine David yeah. Lean is it like that shot of the horizon and the camel just comes over and he holds the horizon shot forever. It's like that, is it? At least, at least as good as that. That shot, the GoPro didn't get it. The GoPro didn't record because I don't know whether it's that you didn't press the record button <laughs> or I didn't press the record button or the GoPro uh, was just, you know, had a little bit of a mind of its own. But we are now, by the wonders of filmmaking, we're in the future. Right. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. So we're in the future, and we can see now, if I can find it, the, um, there it is, look, that is, that is the repair. Oh yeah. It seems to have worked very well. We've just got to clean it up when we... we flip um, it when we do the whole underside and we flip the boat. But uh, our little repair has worked. That's not really as good as the shot that well, no, it wouldn't be, we it? had, but it'll have to do. Do we need to attribute blame to not having that shot? I think, well, given the GoPro is actually recording this. It can't be the GoPro though. We don't want to upset it, so. We'll just have to say it's one of those things. Well, we hope you enjoyed that. And um, we wanted to give you kind of an idea of some of the setbacks and some of the discussions that go on when you're building a boat like this. Um, it's not all plain sailing. Um, next time, we're going to be planking the boat and we will be going into that in some detail. So we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks again for watching and thanks again for all the comments. Um, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.